Welcome back. We're continuing to look at geometric terms that we need to know. In the last video, we talked about what an undefined term is, and we talked about how different figures can intersect. Two lines will always intersect in a point. A point or a line in a plane can intersect in a point, or all the points on the line could be in the plane, or the line could be not intersecting the plane at all. Two planes will always intersect in a line. So we have a line running through two planes intersecting, okay? Now let's look at how some points relate to each other. So when I look in the back, before we do this, we need to discuss the word congruent. We'll see the word congruent all year long in geometry. Congruent is kind of, I like to think of it as a fancy way of saying equals. It just means two things have the same measure. So if I were to get a ruler and I were to measure these two segments here, and I find out that they have the same exact length, then I would say these two were congruent, okay? So let me put labels on the end of these segments so we can talk about exactly what I mean with that. So let's say I've got point A, point B, point C, and point D. If I were to measure and I said the distance from A to B is five, Okay. Notice I didn't put a segment bar up there. Whenever you're talking about distance from one point to another, you don't write the segment bar. So the distance from point A to point B equals 5. Let's say the distance from point C to point D was also 5. A, or sorry, C to D, let's say that was also 5. So if AB is 5 and CD is 5, then I can say... A, B, the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from C to D. That means the segments are congruent. So we can say not only is the distance from A to B equal to the distance from C to D, we can say that segment A, B is congruent to, that's my symbol for congruent, it looks just like equals but with a squiggle on top, segment A, B is congruent to segment C, D. Okay, so when you have the segment bars, that's when you're going to use your congruent symbol. When you don't and you're just talking about distance and the actual measure, that's when you're going to use the equals. Okay, the next thing, sometimes they don't give you the measures, but they tell you two things are congruent. And the way you're going to know they're congruent is you'll see something called a tick mark. So your tick mark is just a little mark on your segment that shows you you have congruence. So when I look at segment A, B, and segment C, D, to show that they're congruent in the picture, we put a little hash mark or a little tick mark on each one that matches. And that tells me, without having to actually get a ruler, that segment A, B is congruent to segment C, D. Now here's the weird thing in geometry. If these two segments don't look equal, but they both have the tick mark, we still have to say they're equal. If these two segments do look equal, but they don't have the tick marks, then we're not allowed to say they're congruent unless we can show it some other way, like we actually get out a ruler, or we're actually told that they're both five, or we can mathematically show that they're both five, okay? All right, so then now we're going to look at our points. The first point we're going to look at is called a midpoint. And a midpoint is just a point that divides a segment into two equal lengths. So let's say I've got point E and I've got point F. And so I have segment EF. If I put a point right in the middle and I call that point G, if it's right in the middle, I can say that G is a midpoint of segment EF. In this picture, I don't have enough information. Even though it looks like I eyeballed pretty well and G looks like it's in the middle, I don't know for sure it's in the middle unless I can prove it mathematically or my picture has tick marks. Once I add tick marks to that picture, which I'm only allowed to add if that information's been given to me or if I can mathematically prove it, Okay, I can't just put them on there just for fun, okay? Once I, if I'm given tick marks or if I can prove there should be tick marks, then I can say G is a midpoint of segment EF. 
So remember EF capitalized and then a little segment with no arrows over it for that. Okay? Anytime you have a midpoint, that means you'll have two equal segments. So I know that segment EG is congruent to segment, so EG and GF. So that's a midpoint. The next we're going to talk about is called collinear points. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. So if I were to put points all on this line, then all three of those points would be coplanar or collinear because they're all in the same line. So co means together, and then line together on the line. Okay, collinear. So points M, H, and S are collinear. If I were to come up here and put, enough, put a point up here and call this point J, then I would say points J, M, and H Are, there's no way I can make one line that doesn't bend that goes between those three points. So we say they are non collinear. Okay? Now be careful. If I look at just point J and M, points J and M, what do you think they are? Collinear or non collinear? Points J and and M, remember in the first video, we talked about how undefined terms can be invisible. And anytime you have two points, even if there's not a line that you can see, there's an invisible one there. So we still say they are collinear. Because even though there's not one drawn there, I could draw one. The difference between the second line here and the third line is I can't even draw a line between these three without bending the line, right? And once it bends, it's no longer a line, okay? Coplanar is how we say this. I know it looks like coplanar, but coplanar points are very similar to collinear points. Collinear, together on a line, collinear. Coplanar are together on a plane, okay? So points that are in the same plane. So if I have point R, point A, and point M all in this plane, then I would say they are coplanar. So points R, A, and M are coplanar. Okay? If I were to add a fourth point off of my plane, then those four points together would not be coplanar. So points R, A, M, and S are non-coplanar. But now, if I were to take points R, M, and S remember even if it doesn't look like it's in the same plane three points will always make a plane no matter whether they look like they're in the same plane or not three points R, M, and S will still make a plane so three points will always be co planar. Okay? All right, just a couple more here. These are kind of some exercises that you might be asked to do. For example, it just says describe the following. And there are multiple correct responses. Here I can see a point Q and I can see a line that's a lowercase like cursive L. So I have a point Q and I have a line L. So I could say point Q is on line L or I could say line L passes through point Q. Or I could say point Q is contained on line L. So there's different ways to say it, and you can say it however you'd want. So I might say line L passes through 
point Q. But again, that's not the only way I could have described that picture. Okay? When I look at number two, I can see I have two planes. I have a plane that's standing kind of up, plane S, and then I have this horizontal one that's kind of laying down, plane T, and I can see that the line that goes between them is AB. So I can see that line AB is where the two planes intersect. So I can say that a couple different ways. I could say plane S and plane T intersect at line AB, or line AB is the intersection of planes S and T. So again, more than one way to say it, they're both correct. I'm going to go with line AB is the intersection of planes S and T. Okay, sometimes we're asked to draw our pick figures. So for example, this next one, ray, because I only have one arrow, hj and ray, hs, are opposite rays, and point m is between h and j. Okay, so I know I've got opposite rays. We haven't really talked about that, so let's talk about what that means to be an opposite ray. That means, it kind of is instinctual, it means they go in opposite directions. And they're going to look like a line. Okay, so when I want to draw ray HJ, let's say I'm going to go, I'm going to start at H, and I'm going to go off in the direction of J. Okay, so that is ray HJ. Ray HS has to be an opposite ray. Now, since it's ray HS, it has to also start at H. So I know that this one is going to start here at H, and it has to go in the opposite direction. So if this one goes to the left, then the next one has to go in the to the right. Okay? And this one is called ray HS. I've already got my H, so now I need my S. And then last but not least on this one, point M needs to be between H and J. Now, let's talk about the word between. Between does not mean it has to be a midpoint, okay? It can be anywhere in between H and J. So when I look at H and I look at J, point M can be anywhere in between there. It can be real close to J. It can be real close to H. It could be right in the middle. When I see the word between, though, as good practice, if I'm sketching my own picture, I will purposefully put M not at a midpoint. That way I don't accidentally later when I'm working with this picture think that it really is a midpoint because I don't have anything that tells me it really is. And so now I have J, M, H, and S. All right, the last one is kind of a tricky one to draw. Two planes intersecting. And I won't ask you to do this very often, but if I want to draw two planes intersecting, the first thing I'm going to do is draw one that looks just like a rectangle, like it's just standing up. Okay? Then my second plane, I'm going to draw two little diagonal segments that cross, that are kind of parallel looking, that cross my two vertical pieces. Okay? And then I'm going to connect them in the back. So there are my two planes. One is plane J, and the other is plane M. And these are supposed to contain line HS. So that means HS has to be in both planes. That means it has to be the intersection. So where my two planes intersect here and here, that is where my line is going to go. And I can actually make these two points my H and my S, or I can add two other points on it and call one of those H and the other one S. So there is two planes, J and M, intersecting, and they both contain the orange line, HS. Okay, so we looked at point relationships, and then we practiced drawing and sketching some figures, and we learned the word congruent, and we know what tick marks are used for to show congruence. Okay, all right, thank you for watching.